Hey there, today I'm gonna to show you a very simple way to have your Jupyter Notebook work within a GitHub repo. Uh, I understand that some people are used to using their IDE, like VS Code or something along those lines to communicate with Git, but the, the Jupyter Notebook and the Git command line work just as well. The first thing we're gonna do is the first thing you should always do, which is create your GitHub repo. So I'm gonna to go to github.com and I'm gonna hit new next to repositories. And I'm gonna name this uh, Jupyter example. Obviously you can name yours, whatever you'd like. Um, I tend to like to make my repos private when they're under development. Um, sometimes, you know, if you're, if you complete something and you like to open source it or show it off, you can make it public, but I usually start out private. Um, I don't need people seeing me falter or struggle. Um, I definitely don't want people pulling it down before it's ready and trying to use it themselves. Now, when you create a repo and you don't include anything with it, the connection process between your computer and GitHub can be somewhat cumbersome. So I tend to add a readme file always. The other thing is Jupyter Notebooks can produce a lot of files that you don't necessarily need to commit. So I'm also gonna add a git ignore file. And git, git actually is very helpful. GitHub provides you with uh, some templates for git ignore. I'm gonna choose the Python template. And then I'm gonna hit create repository. So instead of getting an empty repo, I actually now have a repo with two things. I've got an, uh, uh, a readme MD that just has the headline in it, but it makes the cloning process simpler. And then I have this git ignore, which having it from the jump is great because it will keep some of the stuff that we don't need to commit from ever showing up in our, rep in our repos. So I'm gonna go to code and my computer is set up to use SSH keys. Um, so I'm using the SSH version. If yours isn't, you may want to use the HTTPS version. So I'm clicking on SSH and I'm going to copy this. And then I will go into my sites directory because that's where I keep all of my coding projects. And I'm going to do git clone paste. And that has created the directory called Jupyter example. If I CD, which means change directory into the Jupyter example, just gonna clear my screen there. Uh, I see that I've got my git ignore file and my readme.md. So now I can just start up the Jupyter Notebook. So again, I'm inside my repository. The Jupyter Notebook uh, GUI is actually showing me the readme file as an option, but I can go in and I can just create a new notebook um, my sample notebook. I tend to keep things lowercase. I tend to use underscores and dashes in lieu of spaces. Uh, different file systems behave differently. OS X and Windows tend to be fine with these things, um, but not everyone's running those. Um, you know, there are different flavors of Linux and, and even older versions of Windows that might choke if you have a space in the wrong place or URLs that might choke if you have special characters in the wrong place. So I keep things simple. I just use uh, lowercase letters and dashes or underscores in lieu of spaces, and I hit rename. We're just gonna do something very simple, right? So name equals TC, right? So I'll run that one, and I'll create a new cell. Um, and then I'm gonna write, you know, a nice little salutation. So print, do an F string, hello. My name is name, and this is my Jupyter Notebook. And I'm gonna run that one. That ran successfully, great. My code works, I'm happy. This is a logical stopping point. Let me just make sure I'm saved. And then I'm gonna go back into my terminal. Just open up a new tab. It should actually open up right inside that same directory that you were in in this tab where you started the Jupyter Notebook. And I'm gonna do a git status. And I see my new notebook file there, right? My sample notebook, IPYNB, that's the file extension for a Jupyter Notebook. So I'm going to do git add and then dot, that will add the notebook file to the list of, to the list of staged files or the list of files that are going to be committed. And I'll do a git status to confirm. 
Okay, so up here it said untracked files. Those are files that do not yet exist in your Git repository. They have not been added to version control at that point. When I do git space add space dot, it says changes to be committed and I see that it's a new file. The language here is very important. When you do a git add, you are not adding a file to the repo. You are adding a change to the list of things to be committed. So if you modify a file, git add will add that file to the list of files to be committed or the list of, of changes to be committed to your repo. If you delete a file, you still have to do git add because you deleting the file is a change that you want to commit. So the add statement is in regard to adding things to the list of changes that you wish to commit in your next commit. And that's what I'm going to do now is my next commit. So git commit adds the Jupyter notebook file. I hit enter and then I push. Let's go back to my repo. I refresh. There's my notebook file. If I click on it, because it's an, because it's actually in the notebook format, I get a nice, uh, pretty preview right here in GitHub. It's that simple.